This is my watch. A watch I bought one year ago. A mechanical it is, and have stories to tell already. So, welcome to Time Tech. You see, my love for mechanicals, well, watches, is actually started from Breitling. With their aerospace and chronomat, I got fascinated by how a watch can vary so differently in the internals. So, I googled more. Then, things took a turn. Before I know it, the holy trinity is engraved in my brain, possibly scarring me cause inflation. Well, and then people left, right, and center started recommending me Seiko 5 models. Then I bought one. Now, I decided to do this recap, not for views. Well, to some extent, this is YouTube and I need views. So please go and subscribe. It takes you like two seconds, so don't be lazy. Well, sub to my secondary channel too, where I post idiotic things when I feel like it. I also decided to do this because, like my tech content, I refreshed my S21 review. So to promote equality, time is a must as well. So here I am with my mini SVGA283 or the Seiko 5 SNKD9 and K1 or Budget Explorer 2 or whatever that makes me feel good about being poor. Now, quick rundown. This one I think is introduced in 2006 because it's a Seiko 5. There's often five categories a Seiko 5 must meet. Now, because I work like EA, you got a DLC away. So give me my views for my last year review of the watch where I covered them all. Alright, sorry, just meddling around. Here's the list. Automatic winding a day and day window, water resistance, a recessed crown at 4 o'clock, and a durable case. Well, this case sure as heck is durable. The design, though messy to me at first, I've actually grown to love it. The way the, brush, the brushed 316L stainless steel meets with a glossy stainless steel give off with an air of class. The 5 minute intervals marked on the bezels of the watch is helpful in terms of telling the time on the fly. So, now this serves as a functional feature. Despite not liking it at first, well, now, I adore it! I never talked about durability, uh, but I'll talk about it later, since that's the best part of the watch. Speaking of Rolex Explorer 2s, Grand Seiko's, GMT's, and much more, here's a little tidbit. If you memorize the time zones, or uh, any three handles can be GMT. In my case, GMT plus 8, I have to, I use it to check on Munich time, and since Munich is 6 hours behind where I am, I just divide the watch in half and voila, you get yourself the Munich time zone. Next, 7S26. Oh boy, I gotta sound like a Seiko, sh sh Seiko's my sugar daddy, but here goes, brace for impact. Why did I say so? Simple. The movement is accurate. When you hear an automatic watch every day, it remains accurate. Could this watch be overperforming? I have just as much idea as a non-watch guy. Go song, Ling, zero. Break away from that sugar daddy relationship and I complain that I need hand winding. I swear it's becoming a sick joke when I wind in front of my friends. Oh boy, I look like a pervert. Now this bracelet is cursed. How it refused to behave like a normal bracelet. Meaning it felt stuck when you used the damn thing. But some may have hairy hands and it's not gonna feel good due to it being hollow link. Damn this watch is a psychopath. Love watching people suffer. Please laugh at my jokes, I'm desperate. Durability wise, what the hell is this watch made of? No care 33 and how in the world hell this survived me falling down so many bloody times abusing the damn thing. Literally, it survived every single bloody IHF approved love tap at the wall. Now there's some dins, dents, scratches and at the watch and the scratch at the mineral crystal which I can swap out for sapphire. Seiko, please just introduce sapphire already. It's annoying, I don't care about your hard legs. But man, this watch looks stressy. It performs like a G-Shock. I wear this watch, uh, I wear this, this watch everywhere, every, everywhere and every day, and I swear this watch can shatter smartwatch displays or even give them a small scratch. Even though skew, steels can't, can't scratch glass or whatever related. So, there you go, my watch. One year later. Every scratch tells a story. And I wish I never really owned this watch. Rather, I'm merely looking after it for the next generation. Protect Philippe. So thanks for watching. Comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.